Well, first off, want to take a moment to welcome you all to this University of Rochester admissions webinar. Uh, today's focus is a virtual version of an event that myself and many of my colleagues uh, really, really enjoy getting to do when um, visits to campus have been more feasible, which is to take you on a bus tour throughout different neighborhoods of the city that our university uh, finds as its home. So this is our attempt to try to virtualize a bus tour of Rochester um, to both give you an idea of not just where the university and its different campuses are in relation to other areas of the city, um, but to also share some, uh, some insights, some fun facts um, about different neighborhoods in the city and some of the things that many of us find really valuable about living in Rochester um, or being a student here uh, at the university. Um, uh, we're gonna take a quick second, uh, the panelists here, to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm gonna start, my name is Patrick O'Neill. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admission here at the university, um, but I'm also a Rochester native, born and raised here. Uh, I've been working in the Office of Admissions here at Rochester since 2007. Um, I cover for my recruitment territory a lot of areas close to Rochester, including the greater Rochester area, different areas of Western New York, Canada, uh, and a little bit down in New York City. Uh, and then I also did both my master's and my doctoral work uh, at the Warner School, which is the Graduate School of Education here at the university. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of our, our guide, if you will, as we go through this virtual bus tour, but I'm so super excited to be joined by a couple of our current students today who are gonna pop in and, and share some of their own experiences at Insights a couple of times through this tour. Um, but before that, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking for a bit and give them a chance to introduce themselves to you uh, and learn a little bit more about uh, their uh, connections to Rochester. Um, okay, I'll go. Hi, so I'm Aman. I'm a current sophomore at UR and I'm double majoring in political science and psychology. And I am originally from Lahore, Pakistan. So I'm an international student and yeah, that's just like a little bit about myself. Yeah, hi, I'm Vanshika and I'm an international student as well from India and I'm currently a junior studying finance and business analytics and yeah, really excited to talk to all of you today. All right, well I'm grateful for both of you for being here today and hopefully can share some of the current student perspective uh, with everybody here today as well. So just a quick sense of kind of what our, our goals are an overview uh, of this session. So. Um, just before we dive into some of the content we have for you all, we're just going to go through some of the tools we have to enable you to really make this as interactive a session as possible. Sadly, we're not on a physical bus where maybe you could throw questions at me or the students as we're going through the city. So we want to make sure you're able to use some of these tools in this webinar setting to ask um, our students questions during the session or to ask um, any other questions that you might have. Uh, my colleague Joe Latimer from Admissions uh, is joining us on this session, and he's in the background and also able to answer questions. So we encourage you to send those questions to us at any point during our time together, during the next hour or so, um, and certainly feel free to address the question specifically to either of our students, um, if they're maybe related to the student experience or something that either of them said about their identity at Rochester you want to learn more about, um, or if it's maybe a little bit more admissions related, you can certainly feel free to address it to Joe, but throw those questions in there at any time uh, during our time together. The next part of the session will be a, a brief overview of campus uh, and in relation again to other parts of the city. We're going to talk a little bit about what actually connects our students to different neighborhoods in the city, uh, and that's primarily through the University of Rochester shuttle system, which also goes out to some of the suburbs. Um, we'll have uh, a short video or two during our time together so you can hear from some other members of the Rochester community and get an opportunity to see um, some activity in different neighborhoods uh, uh, of the city of Rochester. Then we're going to do our actual bus tour uh, and we're actually going to, to drive around the city, uh, so to speak. Uh, and then um, questions. So again, we'll, we'll certainly do our best to answer any questions during the session, uh, please feel free to send those again to us at any time 
uh, during the, the session in the Q&A box. And I'm gonna move forward here and just show everybody really quickly where that Q&A box is right there. All right, so if any of you have been spending a lot of time potentially um, in let's say Zoom um, meetings rather than Zoom webinars, this is a bit of a different um, setup in terms of how you can send questions to us. So you send these in uh, and then any of our panelists can answer them. And as soon as that answer is typed, it'll become public to everybody. Um, I encourage you again to send them in as soon as those questions pop into your head. Sometimes students wait till like right to the end of the session to ask us a bunch of questions and we may not have time before the end of our session to answer all of them. So please feel free to, to send those to us uh, at any point. Okay, just to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm gonna take one quick step back uh, and just actually show everybody where we are in New York State. Um, I've lived in Rochester basically my whole life, but when I go and, and, and travel to New York City uh, or areas in a different part of the state and I say, well, I'm from Rochester, I'm from upstate New York, I understand that means a lot of different things to different people. So it's probably more accurate to say we're in the Finger Lakes region of New York State. Rochester is the third biggest uh, city uh, in New York State, we're a little bit smaller than Buffalo, which is about an hour to our west. And as you can see, uh, up and around Lake Ontario, we're about uh, three hours or so from the city of Toronto. Um, the Rochester Airport uh, is less than a five minute drive from our campus. We're also very easily connected to Amtrak, Greyhound, the, and other bus services for students traveling to and from campus, potentially over breaks. Uh, and of course, if you've not been to Niagara Falls, that's only about an hour and a half so from Rochester and an absolute must see uh, during your time uh, at the university. Uh, this is a map of the actual city of Rochester. The city kind of has an interesting shape. Uh, you can actually see the Genesee River flowing through the city, through Center City, up through the Charlotte neighborhood of Rochester and then emptying out into Lake Ontario, the smallest of the five Great Lakes. That star you see towards the bottom is meant to indicate where the river campus of the University of Rochester is in the Mount Hope neighborhood. So you'll see while we are in the city, we are relatively close to the city line. Uh, and you'll be able to, to see a little bit about uh, on this photo kind of how this actually looks in relation to downtown Rochester and, and also Lake Ontario. The River Campus is the home to the undergraduate colleges in arts, sciences, and engineering at Rochester. So with the exceptions of students studying in our School of Nursing or in the undergraduate programs at the Eastman School of Music downtown, all 5,000 or 600 full-time undergraduates are taking their classes, the vast majority of them on the River Campus. The vast majority of students live on campus or in campus housing for all four years. I will note it is only required for the first two years, but it's about 90% who stay on campus all four years. Uh, and then the River Campus is also home to a couple of graduate schools. Uh, I mentioned my alma mater, the Warner School, um, the Simon School, uh, our Graduate School of Business, and then also the Hagen School, which has graduate programs in engineering and applied sciences, also shares our campus with us. But you can see kind of how the Genesee River flows around our campus. We're almost on a bend here in the river, and you can almost follow the river right into downtown Rochester and through Lake Ontario. So when we begin, our, our virtual bus tour and start taking you through some of the neighborhoods. The first one will be following that river, uh, the Genesee, right out towards the back exit of the river campus into some neighborhoods like Corn Hill. Uh, and now this is just the river campus from a slightly different perspective. Um, and this, I just wanna be able to acknowledge the geographic proximity of another part of the university, namely the University of Rochester Medical Center, which is actually right across the street. It's about a five minute walk or so from my office uh, in Wallace Hall on campus. So it's home to Strong Memorial Hospital, Golisano Children's Hospital, the university's Graduate School of Medicine and Dentistry, School of Nursing, Eastman Institute for Oral Health. Um, U of R is actually, the, the university is the sixth largest employer in all of New York State. Uh, much of that is due to the, the medical presence of the university at the medical center and other parts uh, of the city. Um, we are actually the largest employer in all of Monroe County, where the university is located. Uh, and if you follow the medical center all the way to the right in this photo, you see the beginnings of College Town, 
which is actually where our bus tour will end as we circle back to campus. Um, College Town is home of the University Bookstore um, and a lot of different shops and restaurants and about a 15 minute walk or so from our campus. The only other part of the university that we're not gonna kind of directly interact with at all is the Laboratory for Laser Energetics, um, which is a, about another 15 minute or so walk um, actually right over the city line uh, into the suburbs. Um, university owns and operates uh, one of the most powerful ultraviolet lasers in the world, the Omega-3. So it's a world-class research facility, but a little bit further uh, off our, our, our path today. So we're not gonna intersect directly with it. This is an overhead shot of the river campus. Um, and you can see I've, I've added just a couple of visuals for some of our upperclassmen residential life buildings that are on the other side of the Genesee River, maybe not on the river campus proper. Uh, one of them is Brooks Landing um, and the other is uh, Riverview. Um, these tend to be popular amongst upperclassmen. They're more apartment style living than maybe your typical, you know, double or four, six, eight person suite that might be more common for uh, students in sophomore or junior year. Um, we do see that because we have these more independent, more apartment-like residential life facilities available, that's been one of the reasons, in addition to just really close connection to campus life, why we found so many of our students choosing to stay in campus housing for all four years. Um, and I, I would be negligent if I didn't give a quick mention to this kind of map within a map you see on the right hand side here. It says at the top campus tunnels. Uh, and that's because on the main academic parts of the quad, generally you're entering from outside on the second or third floor because most of these buildings are connected by a series of heated underground tunnels. Uh, we may not have been using them as much uh, in the past 10 months, um, but they are a very popular way for many of our students to be able to navigate um, all times of the year, but I'm gonna to venture to say it's a little bit more popular in like January to March time when uh, winter might be here and it might be a little bit less uh, uh, exciting for students to be walking 15 or 20 minutes from one class to another. Uh, it's also kind of a rite of passage when you start here as a first year, how long it takes you to kind of learn the tunnel system because the map doesn't make a ton of sense. You can go to the bookstore now actually, and they have these t-shirts that have the tunnel maps on upside down. So you can kind of just be walking around and looking down at, at your shirt if you're not quite sure if this tunnel's gonna take you to Dewey Hall or, or Meliora Hall. Uh, and then this is a, a quick representation of the shuttle routes open to all students and university members during the main academic year. So you'll see there's obviously a lot of activity going around the river campus, but also shuttle lines that are going out into different neighborhoods here in the city, um, and some that are even going to suburbs like Henrietta, uh, Pittsburgh, out to you know larger suburban shopping centers, malls, Target, Bed Bath & Beyond. There is a grocery store that is um, out of Rochester. There's a, a number of them in the Northeast um, and, and parts a little bit further south called Wegmans um, that many, myself included, in the Rochester area are big fans of, and you can make sure to get yourself to uh, Wegmans uh, on the shuttle route. Um, but before we kind of jump in and, and, and show a, a quick video, um, and then actually jump on our virtual tour and go through some different neighborhoods of the city, I'll invite um, our students to maybe share a little bit um, maybe anything related to, to things we've talked about already, or maybe more specifically, you know, as a campus where first years don't bring cars, you know, how did you navigate and get around campus and, and, and off campus and maybe how you've used the university transportation system. Yeah, so, um, so as a first year, I found it very easy to get around the city of Rochester and campus itself is a very, very medium sized campus. So in my experience, you can walk the entire campus in like 15 to 20 minutes um, and just like see everything because it's not like a super big campus, which I personally like because it means that I run into people a lot that I know and get to see friends all the time. Even with like COVID guidelines, you would run into people and like be able to say hi on campus this past semester. And as for getting around, um, the shuttles are very useful. Um, for example, there's a shuttle that goes to College Town. And even though College Town is like a 10 minute walk, so if you really just want to like get some exercise and you can walk too, which like I did a lot. Um, but um, you can take the College Town Express to College Town. And then we have the blue line that um, runs like um, around like the area. So it also stops at some of the dorms that we have like um, 
some of the graduate housing. And then we have the green line that goes to Target and Walmart on the weekends. And so that's like a, a really like great way to get around and like go to like that area. So personally, um, there are also shuttles that go to um, the mall during like orientation in like normal years. So um, obviously like with COVID, it's kind of different, but hopefully, you know, in a few months when things start returning back to normal, you also have that. So personally, like I never felt like I couldn't go anywhere um, if like, because like I didn't have a car, like I found it pretty easy to go to downtown Rochester using um, the um, shuttle that goes to Eastman and downtown Rochester where they're like cafes and stuff. So I never like really felt like I couldn't, you know, go around just because I didn't have a car. Yeah, like Iman said, uh, similarly, I often took the shuttles to go to college town or, and often the university had special shuttles, like maybe once a month, they organize a shuttle to Eastview Mall or like on Black Friday. So they often even had special events where they organize these shuttles. And uh, I mean, hey, if you don't have a car, you can even make friends with an upperclassman. The campus is very friendly and there's always Uber or Lyft, which is super convenient. So yeah, I think those were the ways I really got around, but the shuttle is really well connected. Like, I don't think there's anywhere where the shuttle doesn't go. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure our students know more about this as, as a slightly older person, maybe not as adept with the technology. There is an app that you can download on your phone that has kind of the real time of the shuttles as they're going around the city. So again, you know, you don't have to feel like you're waiting out uh, at a bus stop or not being able to kind of plan your day, especially if maybe you have lessons down at Eastman or just a real pressing need to, to get to Wegmans uh, ahead of dinner or something like that. So before we start our formal tour, I've got a short video um, that's gonna go through and, and just show some highlights from different neighborhoods um, and attractions here in the city. You can also pay attention. There's gonna be a little map on the side of this video that actually shows you where some of these places are in um, geographically in the city uh, of Rochester. So this video is a, a little bit more than two minutes and then we'll join you on the other side and, and start our virtual bus tour.
right. Uh, now, as we begin our, our virtual tour, we're going to hop through some neighborhoods uh, adjacent to the university, head towards downtown, stop at our Eastman School of Music and in the neighborhood of the arts, and, and then head back. Um, again, please feel free to send us questions uh, during the session, whether they're about things we're talking about or other areas, maybe about the off-campus experience at Rochester or, or things about the city you're curious about, so we don't run out of time uh, at the end to try to answer as many of your questions as possible. Um, but as I said, we're going to start heading out the back entrance of campus right along the, the Genesee River. So the Genesee actually begins a pretty fair uh, distance from Rochester uh, down in Pennsylvania and, and empties out, as I said, into the smallest of the five Great Lakes, Lake Ontario. There is a kind of a, a path that many students enjoy walking, running, biking on uh, along, the, along the river that does go right into downtown, but you can also take in the other direction through Genesee Valley Park, which is a public park here in the city that borders the other side uh, of campus. Um, uh, and then across the Genesee River, right adjacent to the university, where some of those upperclassmen dorms uh, I showed you earlier are. Um, that's the 19th Ward neighborhood here in the city. The 19th Ward is, is the largest neighborhood in the southwest quadrant of the city of Rochester, and it's one of the most ethnically and economically diverse areas here in the city. And for those students that do live in the apartments across the river or maybe do move off campus somewhere in the 19th Ward. It's a very short and easy commute. There are shuttles that connect, but there's also a footbridge that you can take that's a, a pretty short walk uh, over the Genesee River to the river campus. Uh, if we go out that back entrance to campus and make a left over the Ford Street Bridge, uh, we enter the, the Corn Hill neighborhood, um, or what some people in Rochester call historic Corn Hill. Um, it's one of the nation's best preserved uh, Victorian neighborhoods, although it has gone under um, some rather intense uh, renovations, uh, especially in the last 10 years. Um, it's uh, certainly home to one of the more popular festivals that many of us in Rochester have missed during the pandemic, which is the Corn Hill Arts Festival, which takes place typically over several days in early July every summer. Uh, and then in this top photo, on the left there, uh, you'll actually see the beginning of what's called Corn Hill Landing. Um, so right on this bike path, uh, as you can see that I mentioned on the side of the river, that can connect you very quickly uh, outside the back entrance of campus to Corn Hill Landing where there's a lot of different, uh, especially local restaurants uh, and opportunities for uh, both outdoor and indoor dining. We go down uh, the road a little bit further and we run into the Blue Cross Arena. Um, so it's the largest indoor entertainment slash uh, athletic uh, complex in the city of Rochester. It's home to um, two of our professional sports team here in Rochester, um, the Rochester Amherst, which is short for Americans. They're the farm team for uh, the Buffalo Sabres uh, in the National Hockey League. Excited that the Sabres finally got at least one win uh, this season so far. Uh, and then also our one major league sports team here in Rochester, um, the Rochester Nighthawks for indoor lacrosse. They were the national champions three years running back in 2012 through 2014. Both the Amherst and the Nighthawks are owned um, by the Pagula family who also own the Sabres and the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Bills fans like me are having quite a fun time uh, this season <laughs> as well. Um, you saw some photos of the abandoned subway. So this is a cool piece of Rochester history. If, uh, if anybody's ever heard of the Erie Canal, uh, which used to connect uh, all the way from Albany to Buffalo um, back in the 1800s, uh, at the turn of the century in 1900, the Erie Canal was rerouted to bypass uh, downtown Rochester uh, and the abandoned canal actually became the core of what was Rochester's subway system. Um, obviously, the subway system is not in use anymore and has not been for a number of years. Um, so there's a lot of uh, like the Urban Explorers Club at Rochester, um, our acapella groups, not in recent years, but some have, have done some music videos uh, down in the tunnel system. But there's also been some more recent development, um, some, uh, some new uh, residential uh, facilities have been built. Um, above the, the Broad Street uh, part uh, of the abandoned subway system. Uh, and there's this newer initiative here in Rochester that's called Rock the Riverway, ROC. Lots of us call Rochester the Rock, or you'll see ROC on a lot of things. It's our airport code, but we've kind of owned it and almost you know turned it into a moniker for the city. Um, Rock the Riverway is, is this, this larger municipal project here 
in Rochester, um, trying to uh, to actually refill in potentially some of this former canal uh, and the subway bed um, uh, uh, from before uh, it was the subway to make a larger kind of waterfront riverfront um, experience here in downtown Rochester. Jiva Theater, uh, as you can see, it's it's the most attended professional theater uh, in all of upstate New York. So kind of once you get away from downstate and all of the theater uh, in New York City, they've got a couple of different stages, do different performances. There are student rush tickets available for our students. Do want to note that even beyond just Jiva and obviously opportunities on our own campus for theater, we're actually completing construction right now on the River Campus on what will be the second theater um, on our campus. So uh, I know Nigel who runs the theater program and others are very excited about, you know, in future years, hopefully being able to even potentially double the amount of theatrical productions that take place on campus. There's gonna be one larger kind of um, more uh, 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 traditional theater and a, a interactive black box space would be the, the two kinds of spaces. But there's also a lot of local community theater at, done at a very high level, um, Blackfriars, Shipping Dock, um, Rochester Shakespeare players who do Shakespeare in the Park every summer, uh, not too far uh, from our campus. Uh, and I got to spend at least a minute on probably one of my top few favorite places in the city. Kind of goes back and forth between one and two, depending on whether I've got my nephew with me, <laughs> which is the Strong Museum of Play. Uh, it was founded back in 1968. Uh, and the muse it's the only museum in the world devoted entirely to play. Uh, it's home to the National Toy Hall of Fame. Um, a very large indoor butterfly garden, uh, and also the World Video Game Hall of Fame. And a lot of that part of the museum is under renovation and growing into a separate new wing. Um, but there are still a number of machines that you can actually visit the Strong and play, including, yes, the world's largest pinball machine, which you can go to the Strong and play for a quarter, as well as like old timey original Mario Brothers and quarter operated machines from back in the 80s when I was younger. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a very interactive museum. There's even a small mini Wegmans in there um, and a great destination for people of all ages. Uh, but certainly I think uh, many folks on the younger end of things sometimes find that to be an especially great experience. Uh, around the corner from the strong is Manhattan Square Park. Um, so that's home to larger concerts. Uh, here in the summer that the, the city organizes, many of those for free, different food trucks come and then um, in the colder months, it's home to one uh, of the outdoor public ice skating um, venues here in the city. Uh, I know many in Rochester, myself included, really missed the Rock Holiday Village this year, which has become a really great uh, opportunity to, to do some local Christmas uh, or holiday shopping around that time of year. And I know for many students have been one of, a great thing to kind of do maybe in one of those last couple days of the fall semester, if you need a break from finals uh, or things like that. Uh, if we kept going past uh, Manhattan Square Park, made a right and then a quick left onto Gibbs Street, we'd find ourselves at another part of the University of Rochester, um, the Eastman School of Music. Uh, Eastman does have a separate admissions process and matriculation process from art sciences and engineering, but I do want to emphasize that it is still part of the university. Um, our students do still have uh, the option to have meaningful experiences at Eastman. This is primarily through taking lessons for academic credit, um, which generally if you come to us with what Eastman calls intermediate proficiency, in voice or your instrument, that that is an experience you can have for all four years and that credit will still count for your graduation. Eastman's a smaller institution numbers wise. So we're talking more about 900 total students, 500 undergraduates, 400 graduates. Um, in a traditional year, they hold well over 700 concerts uh, at Eastman every year, generally on the three larger performance spaces. Uh, so Kodak Hall at Eastman Theater, Kilbourne Hall, and then the newest Hatch Hall, which you can see at the left end of that bottom image uh, on the slide. Um, that one was meant to be the, the newest kind of state of the art music performance space at Eastman. I don't understand all the science about how it, all it works, but people much smarter than me have told me about how they move different aspects of the walls and the orientations of the instruments and different things to make the optimal acoustic experience for whatever kind of performance is happening at Hatch. And it's also given a lot of students at Eastman who maybe wouldn't have the opportunity to perform at one of those bigger spaces earlier in their time, still and have, you know, having the opportunity to perform it at one of those big spaces. Um, Eastman's connected to our campus uh, primarily by the red line. Uh, shuttle, which generally kind of goes back and forth between our two campuses with some stops 
along the way. Um, so this is a really popular destination, not just for students who have an interest in music or are doing things at Eastman, um, but it's just a really walkable part uh, of the city. Um, it, we kind of refer to it as NOTA or NOTA as Neighborhood of the Arts because it's proximity to, to other areas. Um, just a couple of other fun facts uh, about Eastman. It's also home to the Sibley Music Library, which is the single largest academic music library in all of North America. Um, holds almost three quarter a million uh, different items there uh, as well. And that's open to uh, students uh, and faculty uh, at Eastman years year round. Um, and then I think I'll pause here just for a second and maybe give our students an opportunity if there's anything to share about either the area of the city around Eastman, if you've had experiences at Eastman, or maybe even what the, um, you know, the interactions with Eastman students and students at the college might be like. And Iman, why don't I start with you? Yeah, so um, I've personally taken voice lessons at Eastman, actually. Um, I took voice lessons last year. So my um, freshman spring, I actually was able to attend voice lessons in person for a couple of months before we um, had to go online, which also wasn't um, a bad transition at all because I feel like um, the school like helped a lot with the transition, which and like made it easier for the professors and the students. But the Eastman campus is very beautiful. And I know so many people who are doing a dual degree. So that's like a dual degree program with the Eastman School of Music and the UR River campus. So you can take, so you can do like a music major at Eastman, but you can also like study whatever you want uh, on the river campus. And a lot of people do that. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, Again, like a lot of people take um, voice less, uh, lessons or like instrument lessons at Eastman. And it's again, a very short commute. So you can take the shuttle down there um, every day of the week. And, you know, just like, um, they're also like, they're like also cafes and stuff um, in the area. So you can go there if you want with your friends. And yeah, it's a, um, it's a good time. <laughs> Okay, thanks for sharing, Iman. So we're gonna we're gonna round the corner uh, from Eastman, and we're gonna go to uh, another part of Noda or Neighborhood of the Arts, uh, and talk a little bit about the Mag or the Memorial Art Gallery. So the Mag is actually a part of the University of Rochester. The U of R is one of the few Tier One research universities in the U.S. that also owns and operates uh, a professional art gallery. Um, the, the MAG is actually located on University Avenue uh, in the city, and that, is, uh, that is, is named for a reason, because that actually used to be adjacent to the home of the undergraduate college at Rochester before we uh, moved a little bit further out and occupied our more residential home a little bit further out from the city center uh, on the river campus. Um, the MAG is open to all students and U of R community members at no cost. It has both uh, a standing exhibit uh, and rotating exhibits. So if you visit one time in the fall semester and one time in the spring semesters, you'll be able to see some of the same things, but also some of different things. Uh, and the, the MAG is adjacent to this interactive kind of outdoor museum that we call Art Walk here in the city. You can see some of the sculptures uh, related to Art Walk uh, here as well. That actually got started back in the late 1990s um, and it connects some of these different art centers like the MAG and Eastman um, and other public spaces here in the neighborhood of the arts together through this defined uh, path. And again, I just wanna emphasize everything we are seeing today as the students I think have mentioned already, you can get to these places using the University of Rochester shuttle system, may not drop you off right in front of some of these places, but they're all within a couple walks, a uh, couple blocks walk from one of the university shuttle stops. So we're gonna pause now to have, share one more video because to really try to, to emphasize the broader uh, arts opportunities and arts and culture community here in Rochester and give you an opportunity to hear from a couple uh, of other members of our community. Then we're gonna jump back in, take our virtual bus tour, head back towards campus, go through uh, a couple of other neighborhoods uh, before we wrap up. The Rochester Philharmonic is a professional orchestra based here in Rochester, New York, in the Eastman Theater at the Eastman School of Music, a professional orchestra founded in 1922 by George Eastman. Well, the Rochester Philharmonic is a fully diversified orchestra with a broad range of programming, classical pops, family educational programs, 
to serve not only the people of Rochester and, and the downtown area, but, uh, but the broad greater Rochester region. A strong Rochester Philharmonic is great for economic development here in the center city and it's a major asset to the students of the Eastman School of Music. When Artist Row started seven years ago, um, the local area of Rochester has quite a few art shows. Uh, there's one festival after another. Um, and one of the things that the community sort of was lacking was one that was really focused on local and up and coming artists. And that was really sort of the, uh, the crux of, of, the, of this particular event. The public market for over 100 years has been the crossroads and the meeting place of Rochester. We see it as an ideal venue for an expression of arts and culture, just as it's always been the perfect venue for all kinds of activities that bring diverse aspects of the community together like no other place in Rochester. The Rochester Museum and Science Center is three floors of highly interactive components and exhibits. It's learning all about science and technology, in our, mostly in our region, so people become familiar with this great city's resources. We have the Strassenburg Planetarium next door, which is amazing. It's a, a four-story dome, which you sit back and relax and see large format screen films of all different types. And then as well as some current event star shows. There's so much to do here that you could spend the entire day. It's great. This is the Central Library of Rochester, Monroe County. We provide Wi-Fi for our patrons, a place to go and quiet study, uh, deeper research than you might get at uh, some of the smaller libraries. Uh, the local history collection in this library is an ex excellent source for anything that you want about Rochester history. And besides books, uh, we have an art gallery here, and uh, we have several local artists hanging in the gallery. Um, the library is important to the community because it is the central library. We're kind of um, the last place for books to go. Um, we house a larger, deeper collection um, than any of the other libraries in the system. We have things that uh, other places won't. The George Eastman House is a National Historic Landmark and it basically offers tours of the mansion and the garden so you can learn about George Eastman, the founder of the Eastman Kodak Company, the man that actually lived in the house and his time period and his accomplishments. In addition to his home, we also have the International Museum of Photography and Film, which is literally a building that is adjacent, built right onto the National Historic Landmark. If you visit the George Eastman House, you learn a lot about Rochester and Rochester history. And so I think people come away with a better appreciation of the community they live in and also the man that made that possible. Plus, hopefully they enjoy a fun day in the gardens listening to music at our garden concerts or enjoy some classical music in a living room that was designed to have classical music heard in it. Things you don't do in normal museums today and so we offer a lot of variety for people to kind of experience and just sort of relax and enjoy um, the experience at a museum in the afternoon. Well, I have to say that video is reminding me it's been a few years myself since I've been to the Eastman House. Uh, and I would definitely encourage uh, any folks who find their way to Rochester when uh, docent led tours are available at the Eastman House to, to take advantage of that. They do this great thing where they walk you through the museum and the grounds as they walk you through the timeline uh, of his life and, and how intertwined it is into not just Rochester history, but uh, obviously a lot having to do with photography and film uh, as well. Okay, so we've we've left. We're heading uh, out of downtown and kind of back towards uh, the river campus. Um, one kind of uh, different and and really exciting change uh, in that neighborhood of the city is that part of the inner loop. Uh, the inner loop was essentially this uh, circular expressway that in encased Center City or downtown Rochester. Um, that part of it uh, began to actually be filled in. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the before and after there. Uh, and then that photo on the right is from about a year and a half ago from the other uh, angle where you can see that uh, this $22 million project actually ended up creating uh, a 3,500 foot long six acre band of, of, of newly developable land. So there's been new um, uh, businesses, some new apartments, there's a new hotel uh, down there, a new uh, Hampton Inn uh, and Suites, um, and some extensions of that strong museum of play I talked about earlier, not just that um, separate facility for the video game Hall of Fame, but a much larger uh, parking garage and, and part of a, a broader development that they're actually calling the neighborhood uh, of play. Uh, but a, a cool thing that happened here uh, in that neighborhood of the city, and I know 
um, having that more direct parkway now with bike lanes um, uh, on the filled in inner loop has made kind of getting back and forth between our campus and certainly Eastman and other areas of neighborhoods are even simpler for students who, who might choose to bike in, in maybe the less snowy months uh, of the year here in Rochester. Um, just one or two things about a couple of other um, areas of the city and then we'll uh, wrap up um, uh, and give uh, an opportunity for maybe a final question or two. Um, High Falls and Frontier Field. So uh, High Falls is uh, actually the former home of Rochester's flour mills, flour with a U, not with a W. We, we uh, oftentimes call ourselves both, although the one with the W is the more modern affiliation. Uh, we'll talk about the Lilac Festival uh, and some of those flowers in a bit. Um, but uh, the river and the Erie Canal uh, allowed Rochester to be the, the actually largest flower producing city in North America uh, at one point. Uh, and High Falls still exists there. Um, there's a bridge that goes across it and a lot of neat historical landmarks. The one fun fact that, uh, that students in the past have, have told me they found particularly uh, interesting is, is the story of one guy named Sam Patch. Uh, so Sam Patch was actually the individual who, uh, who was the first one to successfully jump over Niagara Falls, you know, in, in a barrel and, and, and live to tell the tale. Um, and uh, he came then down, uh, down the Erie Canal from uh, kind of the Buffalo area to Rochester. Uh, and, and he jumped over High Falls very successfully, but was disappointed that there were not more people there to see this great accomplishment. So he decided to do it again on uh, Friday, the 13th day of the month, back in 1829. Uh, and he was, uh, did not kind of emerge from the bottom uh, of the falls. So he was able to conquer Niagara Falls, but uh, non, uh, not uh, High Falls here in Rochester. Uh, yeah, on the other side of where High Falls is, is actually right adjacent to uh, Frontier Field. So Frontier Field was built back in, in 1996. It's the current home of the AAA minor league baseball team, uh, the Rochester Red Wings here. Um, our affiliation has just changed for a number of years. The Red Wings were the farm team for the Minnesota Twins. Um, and if we happen to have any Washington Nationals fans here, the Red Wings just became the new farm team for the Washington Nationals uh, franchise down uh, in DC. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's actually, uh, not only have the, the Red Wings been uh, around for uh, a long time, but they've actually set some records in terms of, of how long they've been a continuously, continually operating franchise. Um, one of my favorite things uh, certainly to do in, in the summer months here at Rochester is for a couple of bucks to be able to go out and, and see a, a Red Wings game many days of the week. Uh, Park Avenue is a really popular destination for, you know, local shopping, local dining here. My first apartment after undergrad was above a small Mediterranean restaurant called Sinbad's on Park Avenue that I still have a lot uh, of affinity for. Um, we will see some students who maybe just decide to spend a summer in Rochester, maybe to conduct research, maybe for an internship, maybe you're working and you decide I do want to maybe move off campus for that summer. You know, Park Avenue tends to be a pretty popular uh, uh, destination for those students um, and, and home to a, a festival that I, I certainly do see uh, a number of undergraduates returning to Rochester for, which is the big Park Ave Festival, uh, which essentially takes place over the, almost the whole length of Park Avenue, um, typically about the, the first weekend in August every summer. Uh, and then Highland Park. So I was, I was referencing to our, our um, affiliation as the Flower City with a U earlier. Uh, this is part of where the flower with a W uh, comes from. So Highland Park, it, as you said, we're actually getting pretty cl close uh, to campus. Highland Park is a, is a stone's throw, a, a relatively short walk from, uh, from campus. Uh, it, was, um, uh, it was actually designed by uh, Frederick Olmsted, who designed Central Park uh, in New York City. Uh, so it's 155 acres with over 1,200 distinct lilac shrubs. Um, there's also a whole bunch of Japanese maples, I think 30 something different varieties of magnolias and hundreds and hundreds of other plants. Uh, because of the, the sheer volume of lilacs, it, it's home to a, a, the appropriately named Lilac Festival. 
typically overlaps with finals here. So I know for many students, it can be a really great maybe break from finals or the reason to maybe spend another day or two on campus um, after your last exam or you've written your last paper um, to be able to take advantage of this, not just the, the blooming of all of those different lilacs and, and walking through the park uh, and all the different acres to, to see them, but there's also quite a bit of live music, um, uh, different shopping opportunities and, and kind of just a, a big kind of festival end of winter, spring is here vibe. Um, that's certainly a, a big attraction for, for many students and others in the Rochester area. Uh, and then if we continued past the park and we're heading back towards College Town, the last piece that, of Rochester that we would pass is the Mount Hope Cemetery. Um, I, I sometimes joke with students that this, uh, the Mount Hope Cemetery is adjacent to the quieter uh, side of campus because it actually does back up um, right to part of the river campus. Um, cemetery was founded back in 1838. Uh, actually, at that point, it was the nation's first municipal Victorian cemetery. Uh, there's over 350,000 individual grave sites, almost 200 acres uh, big. Um, and there are uh, a number of um, famous Rochesterians of the past have their final resting place. Uh, in the Mount Hope Cemetery, uh, just to name a couple, you can find the, the resting places of, of Susan B. Anthony, of Frederick Douglass, um, of George Eastman, um, all right in uh, Mount Hope Cemetery. Uh, it's become popular in recent years for many in the Rochester community to actually take their I Voted stickers and, and take them to Susan B. Anthony's grave. It became so popular that we actually had to put a plastic sheath over the gravestone this year. So none of that adhesive on the back of the stickers could do any long lasting damage uh, to her gravestone there. Um, and uh, the anthropology department in, in many years will actually teach a class uh, in uh, the cemetery as well. Uh, and then at the beginning, uh, I mentioned College Town, kind of the home to our bookstore at the far end of the medical center. So maybe a 10, 15 minute walk uh, or so from campus. Um, so College Town actually um, still relatively new. Uh, it's only been around now for uh, about six years. Um, it did enable us to increase the size of the university bookstore. So it's now a two-story complex. It's a Barnes and Noble formally here right on the corner of Mount Hope uh, and Elmwood Avenue. And there's a lot of different um, local shops and restaurants, but also things like a larger CVS. Um, there's a credit union. There is a, a relatively popular insomnia cookies, um, and not just because their cookies are great because they, they think they deliver to um, hours much later than I'm usually awake for, but many of our students might still be up <laughs> doing work and, and you can get them delivered uh, to you. Um, and many of the businesses in College Town and in areas within walking distance of the university will also take euros, U-R-O-S, which is another form of currency that you can kind of put on your university ID um, in addition to or to supplement your dining plan on campus so you don't need to be, you know, worrying about carrying around um, other sources of funding with you if you're just, you know, deciding to, to mosey on off campus for a bite to eat. Um, and then I just wanted to, you know, uh, again, highlight some different parts of the city that we maybe didn't necessarily spend a bunch of time talking about. You got to hear a little bit about the George Eastman House, um, Ontario Square Park, um, up by Seabreeze and Charlotte Beach, that kind of jug handle, that thin part of the city that goes all the way up to the lake, noting that we have a, an actual amusement park up there with a water park uh, and a public city beach. Um, again, maybe more popular in, in some months of the year uh, than others. Um, the Susan B. Anthony House uh, in uh, kind of the western quadrant uh, of the city is certainly a popular destination um, and a really fun place to, uh, to go and learn a little bit more about not just uh, the woman herself, about Susan B. Anthony, but Rochester's connections to the broader women's suffrage movement. If many of you took uh, an American history class and have heard about the you know, Seneca Falls Agreement, Seneca Falls is, is not too far from, from Rochester, a little bit less than an hour or so uh, east of us. Uh, and then definitely one of my favorite spots in the city, uh, the Rochester Public Market depending on what publication you look at. Lots of times we get to call ourselves the number one public market uh, in, the, in the United States. Um, it does, I think our students mentioned this, there, there are some dedicated shuttle lines that go to places like the public market on particular days of the week, even if they're not on the kind of typical shuttle route. So you can certainly still get to, to places um, like the public market, even if it's, it's not on the, the standard shuttle uh, routes. Okay, and that said, We've turned our virtual bus back in and, and we've circled back to campus. 
Um, uh, hopefully this was a, a useful opportunity for everybody to, to get to see and learn and interact with us a little bit more uh, about different areas in the city of Rochester. Um, I just wanna quickly note uh, our admissions email address if folks do have follow-up questions on that virtual events page you see listed there. Um, we also have posted the um, contact information for admissions counselors by um, geographic assignments. So if you're curious as to who your admissions counselor might be, or you want to learn more um, uh, uh, about things, you can you know, certainly reach out to either our office or our counselors. Um, and just also mentioning that we are offering a large number of virtual information sessions in the coming weeks. So if you've not had a chance to kind of learn more about you know, the university, its curriculum, admissions practices, research opportunities, some more about, you know, student life, athletics, activities. Um, we have a, a separate one hour webinar where a lot of that information is covered. Um, and then starting on the 15th of February and running for four days in um, the coming months, we'll be offering what's called Research Rochester, which is a little bit more in depth. It's about a two hour virtual program um, that kind of gives you an opportunity to especially hear um, and connect a little bit more with our current students. Uh, but with that being said, and we've got a, a minute or two left, um, maybe I'll, I'll take this opportunity and, uh, and put our students on the spot a little bit if it's okay with them and, and maybe ask you to, to maybe share with everybody uh, maybe what either your favorite place in the city or off campus is and especially if it's maybe somewhere we didn't talk about or kind of didn't come up in this virtual tour. So I'll, I'll give you all a, a second to maybe mull on that uh, and think about somewhere else. Yeah, Iman, go for it. I was just thinking, but I'll go, it's fine. <laughs> oh, no, all right. I did put you on the spot then. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's fine. I personally, um, pre-pandemic, um, I personally like going to College Town for bubble tea a lot. Um, it's a very popular tradition for um, like all the students to go to Tai Chi, which is like in College Town and just like get bubble tea. Um, even like on the weekdays, if you're having a stressful day, it's like a short walk or a shell right away. So I love doing that with my friends. Um, there's also um, one of my friends, Will, used to work at Moe's in his hometown, and there's like a Moe's in College Town. So <laughs> we would just go there a lot, and like he would always be like, Welcome to Moe's, like do the little voice that he do when he used to work there. And it was like really funny. So that was like a bit that we used to do freshman year. Um, so that was like, that's like definitely like, um, a, like I really enjoyed going there with my friends. Hey, thanks for sharing. Yeah, another thing that really comes to my mind is uh, outdoor things to do in Rochester, especially towards the summer. There are like so many hiking spots right next to Rochester and um, the university actually has this outdoor club, which even uh, like takes you and organizes like a shuttle or bus. So like that's a great especially like with the pandemic, it was great to have that. And actually right next to campus is the Genesee Valley Park. And I often just go there for a walk or job because it's just such a great break. And even with the pandemic, it's a great outlet to, you know, socially distance and like interact with people. Oh, those are great suggestions. Uh, I love GVP. If you go a little bit further south of Rochester, you can get to Letchworth State Park. Um, whereas the, the one time I attempted whitewater rafting did not go well uh, for me personally. Um, but we do get all four seasons in abundance uh, at Rochester. And, and we've talked a lot about maybe great outdoor things that you can do. And I, I certainly uh, would not want to, to leave folks with the impression that just in these colder months, uh, you, you can't get outside and, and do things. Um, there's certainly a lot of opportunities for fun in the winter here whether it's sledding at some of these parks uh, adjacent to campus, or if you're willing to, to hop on a bus and go you know, a little bit south of Rochester, um, we, will, we will teach you how to ski if you don't know how to ski uh, already. Um, I'm excited, I'm, I'm going skiing for the first time this season uh, on Sunday, uh, it's been a, a little bit, um, but uh, we really do what we can to make sure to really celebrate all of those seasons. Uh, and if you attend our information session, we'll actually tell you a little bit more about some university festivals and traditions around celebrating the fact that, that we do get and enjoy all sorts of different weather here uh, in Rochester. 
Uh, again, uh, I want to be uh, sensitive and appreciative of, of everyone's time and certainly our, our students' time um, and want to, again, thank them uh, oh so much for joining us today. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and throw my email address in the chat box for everybody. So if anybody did want to follow up or you have questions or there are ways we can be uh, additionally helpful and you want to reach out directly, I can see that um, my, uh, my colleague Joe has thrown his out there uh, as well. Um, again, we hope this was a, a useful opportunity for, for many of you to learn more about uh, what we think is, is our great city um, and certainly want to wish you and your families and your communities um, good health. Uh, and hope for those of you who uh, are currently in high school, whether it's senior year, junior year, sophomore year, wish you uh, best wishes and success for the rest of your school year. Thanks for joining us, and, and hopefully we'll see some of you maybe at future events. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you.